On this episode of Briggs Automotive, we're going to be working on this 2003 SVT Cobra independent rear suspension. As it normally goes when working on cars, not everything goes according to plan, and you are going to see some of that. Alright, for those of you who might want to be doing this swap into any 1996 to 2004 Mustang, I'm gonna tell you some baseline things that I looked for when I was buying mine and things that you might wanna look for when buying yours. And just some overall information about the independent rear suspension itself. So for any 1999 to 04 Mustang, this independent rear suspension will bolt in in place of your solid rear axle. So there's no modification required. It's just pull the old junk out, put the new junk in. In my opinion, this is going to be significantly better than any stick axle that you can get. Uh, the stick axle is great if you're gonna go drag racing, but in any other regard, this is gonna win. This is gonna be more comfortable to ride around in. It's gonna handle better. It's just gonna make the car more fun. It's gonna be more enjoyable to drive around because you're not gonna have the stick axle back there, which causes the rear end to handle like a truck. Now, for most people, like I said, if you're gonna go drag racing, that's fine. And for most Mustang owners, that's what they're gonna do. Now for me, I wanna run at autocross or at road courses. So this is the solution to my problem. I bought this and the cylinder heads and the valve covers off of that 03 Cobra for 1200 bucks. So these things come with a 355 rear axle ratio and they come with 31 spline axles and they come with the Ford hard launch brace. Now, one of the reasons that you're gonna wanna look for an 03 Cobra or an 01 is because of those three things. So the 355 axle ratio, I'm pretty sure is stock among all independent rear suspensions. But the 31 spline axles is only an 03 Cobra, 03, 04, and 01 Cobra option. And the differential brace up here at the front is also only an 03 Cobra and 01 option. The 01s, if I'm mistaken, the 01s aren't nearly as solid as these are. This is the best option that you can get. It's the most solid, it's the most sturdy, it's the most beef. So when you go install it in your car, you can put the pedal down and know that you're not gonna have to worry about this thing flying apart. Now I'm gonna get to work. Um, I'm gonna show you what you need to do to take this stuff apart and stay tuned. So to begin with, I am beginning by removing the upper control arm because if you remove the upper control arm, it's much easier to pull the whole half shaft out and everything because it frees up this whole area. So this is where I start. All right, so to start with, take the cross axis joint off of the spindle and always remember to put your bolts back on the nuts. They're much easier to keep track of this way. At least this is the trick I have. And I will be bagging everything. I would suggest doing this because there's a lot to do. This bolt, which goes in the cross axis joint, it's a 19 millimeter on both ends. And all the other ones, the, the two that hold it to the subframe, are 15 on the small end and 19 on the big end. The bolt that holds the brake line to this little uh, bracket on the control arm, this is a 5 16 It's probably metric, but this fits fine. Next on the agenda is your sway bar. Get the sway bar, take it out from here, get, get, get it off of this, then get rid of this bushing, that bushing, same thing on the other side, and I'll just come right out. All right, so the bolts for your bushings on your sway bar are gonna be 13 millimeters. All right, 
So the connection pieces to the lower control arm are going to be 15 millimeters. Okay, so what I said about getting the upper end lengths before, don't listen to that. Start with the lowers, at least if your upper ones are completely seized. Um, so it's a really, the end links on the sway bars have this long stud that's got a thread on it, and there's no way to hold it inside the end link from the back side. So I tried to vice grip it at the top, and it just basically machined the thing around because the threads are so rusted and gacked, basically, that I can't get it off. So my solution is figure it out later. And boom, sway bar has been removed. All right, so the next order of business is gonna be getting these lower control arms off. And you're gonna have to be careful with these because like I said, they are aluminum. Be careful, don't damage these. All right, <clears throat> so start with this one. I would start with that one, but I already got all the tools out for this one. This is where we start. Gigantic ass bolt. Basically, if you've been following any of what I've been doing closely, everything is metric. 19 millimeter. This bolt was 15 16 on the back. Even though it's actually metric, I just don't have a wrench big enough for that. And on the front was a 21 inch. So the other side of the control arm is the same thing. It's 15 16 on the inside, 21 inch on the outside. So, tie rod, um, 15 millimeter on top, 13 millimeter on the bottom. All right, next, we start taking the diff off. Don't start with the top bolt back here on the diff. Start with the one that holds the diff brace in the back. That's what you're gonna wanna use. understand it is you stick this crowbar in here and it pops and you are home free aha There it is, after three hours of hard work, a gradual learning curve, the independent rear suspension is finally taken apart.